Hey guys, Togaholics, thank you guys for being here today. We are at the beginning of a longer term oil bull cycle. The way that I wanted to show you guys this today and why I have this opinion is to actually take a look back at the recent past. We're going to take a look at the most recent longer term oil uh, cycle from peak to peak from 1980 to about 2008 or so. And when we're looking at all of these oil cycles that happen in the past, there are these patterns that happen over and over and over through each of these longer term oil cycles. They go through these six stages. I'm going to talk about the, some of the thing, the stages in the recent past and then compare those to some of the stages, some of the things that are happening in our world today. Here we go. Okay, quickly go over the six stages of every long-term oil cycle. I did not come up with this, by the way. There is an author called Crude Chronicles. He does amazing work. He looks at the history of the oil business, the oil industry, oil cycles, and he looks at them through a financial lens as well. If you do not follow this guy, I highly recommend that you do. I'll put a link to his Twitter and Substack in the comments below. Okay. The six stages. Stage one, there is some kind of a war taking place, but that it ends. There's new supply coming online into the market. Demand begins to slow globally and oil capitulates in terms of price. In stage two, there is a period of instability in oil producing regions. There's some kind of conflict, a minor conflict taking place in between countries that are producing oil. And there's becoming uh, slightly disruptive in terms of getting that oil from uh, producers to consumers. In stage three, there is low capital spending and industry consolidation. After a period of low prices, these guys stop reinvesting in their businesses. And you also begin to see a lot of these companies merging or stronger companies purchasing less uh, less strong companies uh, in the oil space. In stage four, there is a debasement of the currency. It happens over and over. I find this stage the most interesting in the oil cycles. Uh, there is an inflationary cycle. There is an expansion in the monetary supply of some type in stage four. Stage five, there is a new demand hub. There's a brand new geographical location that is uh, requiring more oil and there's also some type of global conflict this is different than stage two because it is a bigger a bigger kind of conflict it's not just taking place in an oil region but it's it's kind of a, a global sort of conflict of some type in stage six there is a hubbard peak this is when there's an oil uh producing production limit and then basically your oil production declines there's fear of supply running out and then prices go parabolic along with capital and spending and along with capex and eventually you start that whole cycle again okay we're looking at an inflation adjusted chart of the last oil cycle from peak to peak in 1980 was the first peak in this cycle and then in 2008 or so was the uh, most recent peak in this oil cycle. Uh, first of all, in stage one, the war ended, demand slowed, oil capitulated, and new supply came online. The big theme, the bigger conflict that was taking place in the 70s and still somewhat in the 80s, but was toning it down, was the Cold War. Okay, That started uh, going... Uh, toning down, especially as the Soviets started declining in about the 80s. And that war officially ended around 1989, I believe. Okay, um, We had demand slowing. One of the things as there was this really high oil price in the 70s, there was a big focus on efficiency. Uh, their cars became a lot more fuel efficient. We also had, even in the United States, we had power plants that were running on oil. And we started shifting away from those uh, oil-fueled power, electricity generation, and focused more on coal and um, gas instead. We replaced some of this oil technology in terms of electricity generation with some other types. So that caused uh, a lower reduction in demand. At the same time, we had... Uh, new supply coming online. We had uh, investments in Mexico that started coming online in the OECD countries. We also had um, uh, Alaska, I believe, where there was drilling taking place. There was some drilling in the North Sea. And so you had all of these new supply regions coming online. There was also uh, big problems with OPEC. They started getting into pricing wars, especially as for fighting for uh, market share. And that relationship started breaking down until eventually that oil capitulated. Now there was instability in oil regions. Uh, the main producers obviously were the Middle East. There were some uh, spats between Iraq 
Iraq and Iran that caused some disruptions. And there was uh, Iraq invading Kuwait. And then eventually there was the United States going in and uh, kicking Saddam's butt as a result of all of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, after a very long period of time, there was, as with these low oil prices, by the way, during this whole time, there's not really profitable across the entire oil space. There was low capital spending. You also saw that there were mergers taking place between a lot of uh, big oil companies out there. There was consolidation, like BP bought a bunch of companies, Shell bought uh, so the Shell USA, I think there was the, the Dutch one purchased off the, the, the consolidated essentially. There was uh, Exxon and Mobil during that time, two big oil majors, they merged into a super major. And you had a lot of consolidation like that taking place. You also had some bankruptcies taking place too with a lot of uh, weaker companies. Eventually, there was a period of monetary debasement. This really started in a really kicked off around 2002, 2003, when we went into an expansionary period of the US uh, housing market. We went into eventually led into a giant uh, housing bubble where we had lots of loans being created against uh, real estate. Uh, and this was also happens to coincide with demographics where you had a lot of Gen Xers purchasing homes. But a lot of that was also malinvestment where you just had a lot of excess housing and excess loans against that housing. And when we get a loan from a bank that creates new dollars into the system and that created a lot of monetary debasement, caused a lot of inflation. Now, we didn't necessarily see that directly in the United States because at the same time, we had rapid globalization taking place and a lot of that inflation became exported. We eventually went into a global conflict when the, uh, the United States was attacked through on the uh, World Trade Center in 2001, I believe, that eventually kicked off a global conflict. The United States uh, went into Afghanistan, we went into Iraq, we brought a lot of our partners with us, and that eventually led into this bigger thematic war, much like the Cold War, where there was a global conflict, a global war on terror that expanded and that also caused even more instability in the oil market. Eventually, that U.S. housing market and the instability in the banking system collapsed. There was a Hubbard peak. There was fears that there wasn't enough oil out there. Famously, even Nancy Pelosi, who is a staunch, I guess, uh, Democrat, very anti-oil. She was even capitulating at this time, saying, you know what, we need to find oil. She was starting to say we need offshore oil to help uh, solve this problem in the United States. But eventually that uh, went on, that collapsed, and then we start the next cycle, which I'm going to go into uh, next. Okay, our current oil cycle from peak to present, the first peak was for, uh, in 2008, and we have yet to see the current peak in this oil cycle, in my opinion. I believe we are towards the later stages of stage four if we are not yet starting stage five, but I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, first of all, the war ends in uh, this stage over here. Uh, we were very deep into the global war on terror still around this time. Eventually, Iraq became more stable. A lot of the U.S. allies started drawing down, and eventually the United States started drawing in, uh, down in Iraq. We still stayed in Afghanistan until very recently, but overall through that this whole period down here, the, that global war on terror became uh, much less of a central focus around the world. It uh, became, I guess, more stable uh, on a global scale. Uh, during this time, we also saw demand slowing. First of all, there was the global financial crisis, but there was also before this, there was a significant demand, uh, especially in the United States, but other OECD countries for fuel guzzling vehicles, uh, trucks, SUVs. And that, uh, the, that trend actually shifted over here. And we saw an increase in uh, the demand for smaller passenger cars. We also saw hybrid vehicles becoming more prevalent. And in some OECD countries, you saw demand slowing, if not uh, outright declining. At the same time, we saw new supply coming on down, online. This was particularly from the United States. We uh, invented a new kind of drilling technology, the frac spread, and that we saw that that uh, oil boom in the U.S. shale patch uh, really, really started picking up. Um, eventually, we started again seeing some instability in oil regions. The U.S. Uh, protection umbrella from the Saudi uh, and Saudi Arabia started uh, to decline. You saw these proxy wars taking place. I think Saudi Arabia also invaded Yemen. We also saw there was uh, 
big problems in Iran. There was issues with the uh, JCPOA agreement that are still ongoing today. And that affected some uh, oil supply output from that country as well. Eventually, uh, after that, uh, that's the boom in shale, uh, it led to very low capex spending. You, we again saw the last five years we've seen uh, in the oil majors out there and uh, probably also in OPEC where we've seen that their capex spending has been uh, lower and lower for uh, several years now. We also saw Russia uh, join in the OPEC plus alliance. So that was kind of a consolidation that took place over there. And we saw things like Chevron uh, buying some companies. They acquired some uh, BP and Exxon. I think they acquired some assets in the shale basin, a lot of these unprofitable shale companies. And the, we saw a lot of consolidation. Then, of course, we had massive capitulation in uh, 2020 with the medical event and a global uh, monetary stimulus all around the world as central banks dropped their uh, interest rates dramatically. We saw direct monetary printing and stimulus going into the hands of individuals. And it's my opinion that this is directly leading to an increase in the demand globally for all kinds of energy commodities. I made a video on this. I think that is one of the reasons we are uh, in a global energy crisis right now, along with um, this event here causing a lot of issues in bankruptcies and things like that as well. We are very deep into the monetary debasement game, and we may also be entering what could be a uh, global conflict to right now. We know that uh, Russia, a major oil producing country out there, has invaded Ukraine. There is drama taking place in uh, uh, Europe. They may be becoming a new demand hub in terms of oil imports if they're not getting that directly from their usual customer. Uh, follow the tanker space. We're seeing all kinds of uh, changes in the trade flows for oil on water. And we've also recently seen a lot of drama taking place between China Taiwan and the United States. So it really does not seem very far-fetched that we may also be entering into a some kind of new global conflict. But I'd be curious to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Let me know where do you think we are in this oil cycle. Um, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Have a great week.